टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट हाइड्रोजन स्पेक्ट्रम व्हाई वेयर द थियरीज ऑफ जे जे थॉमसन एंड रूथरफोर्ड एलिमिनेटेड द मेन इंपॉर्टेंट शॉर्टकमिंग वाज दैट दे कुड नॉट एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द हाइड्रोजन स्पेक्ट्रम दैट इज व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस क्लास सो बिफोर beginning you just recollect what is the expression for energy of an electron in the nth orbit of hydrogen atom it is en equal to minus m e power 4 by 8 n square epsilon square h square here the negative sign indicates that the electron is bound to the nuclear so if you are substituting the value of n as 1 we get the energy of an electron in the first orbit similarly for other values of n which is integers see here we can see the energy levels corresponding to the value of n if you are taking the value of n as 1 what do we say the in case of hydrogen atom if you are taking the value of n to be 1 then the electron is in the ground state if you are taking n as 2 it is in the excited state it also in the first excited state similarly the electron depending upon the value of n will can be in different states so that depends upon the value of n and accordingly the value of energy varies as the value of n is increasing what is happening the energy is also increasing and if you are taking the value of n as infinity what happens the electron will be taken away from the atom or we can say that the atom is converted to a ion here we are taking the energy in electron volt so the energy of the first orbit the electron orbiting in the first orbit is minus 13.6 in the second orbit or the first excited state it is minus 3.4 and so on from bohr's third postulate before we have discussed about when an electron is in a particular orbit that is not the case every time sometimes due to some external sources or radiations or collisions the electrons position may be changed from one orbit to the other so in that case what happens what can we say that was explained by bohr in his third postulate that is h nu equal to e n i minus e n f what are these e n i n e n f e n i is the energy in the initial state and e n f is the energy in the final state for example now we are considering that the electron is in n equal to 2 energy level and after some time the electron comes to the first energy level that is the ground state then we can represent this one as e2 minus e1 that means the energy in the second level minus the energy in the first level so there is a variation in the energy is it so that difference in the energy between the two levels will be eliminated or radiated as photons or light that is the third postulate that was given and this is what gave a good understanding about the hydrogen spectrum that we are going to 
discuss we know that the energy of electron in the nth orbit is this and according to bohr the energy difference when there is a transition from one orbit to the other is h nu if equal to eni minus enm which means that that this is the energy in the initial state and this is the energy in the final state h is the planck's constant nu is the frequency now let us get an equation using this one now to explain about the hydrogen spectrum let us modify this particular equation as h nu equal to e2 minus e1 where e2 is the energy in the initial state and e1 is the energy in the final orbit or state here e2 is see the difference is only the value of n for e2 it is n2 and e1 it is n1 now if you are substituting the value of e2 and e1 in this equation what happens let us substitute and look at the value now we shall take the common terms outside and simplify this equation so this is what is left we have taken minus common and m e power 4 by 8 epsilon square h square as common so what is left 1 by n2 square minus 1 by n1 square now if we make a little modification and eliminate this negative sign what do we get here the term rearranges h nu equal to m e power 4 by 8 epsilon square h square into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square now we are going to replace as we know that at this level the radiation what is the meaning of radiation this light also we know from other equations that nu equal to c by lambda we have replaced the value of nu as c by lambda now let us rearrange the terms now sending the value of h and 2 the right side we are left with 1 by lambda equal to am e power 4 by h epsilon square h cube c into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square this can be simply converted as 1 by lambda equal to rh into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square here rh is called ripper constant whose value is 1.096 into 10 raised to 7 meter inverse how did it get a unit as meter inverse here n1 and n2 are integers and you know lambda is wavelength which is a measure of length so 1 by length will be getting meter inverse so this is the value of ripper constant and this is the final equation that we have derived this is very important in order to explain about the hydrogen spectrum if you are substituting the value of n1 as 1 n2 as 2 will be getting a particular series or particular spectrum of the line if you are substituting the value of n1 as 2 n2 as 3 we will be getting a different value for 1 by lambda so depending upon the value of n1 and n2 the spectrum will be different here is the description of the details of how the spectrum is obtained if you are taking the value of n1 n1 as 1 n2 as 2 3 etc then that series of spectrum is called as lyman series all those values will be coming under lyman series if you are taking the value of n1 as 2 and n2 as 3 4 and so on then 
we get the second series that is Balmer series. Similarly, Pasten series, Bracken series, and Fund series. For if you just look at the value of n1 for all these series, it is one for Lyman series. For n1 uh, Balmer series, the value of n1 is two. For Pasten series, it is three. But the value of n2 can be any value greater than the initial one. So here. In case of Lyman series, we have taken n1 as 1, but the value of n2 that we are taking is 2, 3, and so on. I can take any value for n2, but the n1 value should be 1 in case of Lyman series. Similarly, for other series also. So let us see how we get the spectrum for the different series. We know the basic equation is 1 by lambda equal to r into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. I already told you that for Lyman series, what is that? The value of n1 is 1. n2 can take any value from 2, 3, 4, so on. So how can you define a Lyman series? When there is a transition of electron from any higher orbit to the first energy level that series of spectrum obtained is called Lyman series. I hope it is clear. Now if you are substituting the value of the least value of n to be 2, what do we get? We get if you are substituting and simplifying for n this value for n equal to 2 we will be getting this one. If you are simplifying it what do we get? We get the value of lambda as 121.6 nanometer. So that will be the longest wavelength in Lyman series. So when we are substituting the value of n as 2, we will be getting the value of lambda as 121.6 nanometer, which will be the longest wavelength in this series. Similarly, if we are substituting the value of n as infinity. So what will happen here? This value turns out to be 1 by infinity 0 and after simplifying this equation we will be getting the value of lambda as 91.1 nanometer which is the shortest wavelength in this series. This is how we can obtain the values of lambda in a particular series. To simply observe the longest and the shortest wavelengths in the series are 121.6 nanometer and 91.1 nanometer and this if you are comparing it with the electromagnetic spectrum this line in series will be obtained in the ultraviolet region. Next is the Balma series. What is the only difference here? The value here is 2 and the value of n can take any value from 3, 4 up to infinity and depending upon the value of n here the longest wavelength when we are substituting the value of n as 3 we will be getting the longest wavelength possible and when we are substituting the value of infinity we will be getting the shortest wavelength and that will be the region of this Balmer series the shortest and the longest wavelength that is the limit of Balmer series but there is a peculiarity from other series here Balmer series is in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum the, so that is the reason when there is a transition from third energy level to the second energy level that particular transition is called H alpha when there is a transition from fourth energy level to the second energy level we call it as H beta similarly H gamma so depending upon the transitions we are uh, naming it as H alpha H beta and H gamma so once again H alpha means when there is a transition from third energy level to the second energy level Similarly, H beta and H gamma. Next is the Pasten series. 
then it will be having a value from 3 the n1 value is 3 n2 value can be anything from 4, 5, 6 etc and the longest wavelength in this series will be 1874.1 nanometer and the shortest wavelength is 819.9 nanometer so this passion series will be existing or the limit of this passion series is from between these two wavelengths and this will be occurring in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum suppose you are asked how do we define the passion series whenever there is a transition from any higher energy level to the third energy level that series obtained is called the passion series bracket series here transition is taking place from any higher level to the fourth energy level here the short longest wavelength is 4058.9 nanometer and the shortest wavelength is 1457.6 nanometer the, it appears in the infrared region as the previous one also is appearing in the infrared region the bracket series also will be appearing in the infrared region in the final series that is the fun series what is the definition for this one whenever there is a transition from any higher energy level to the fifth orbit or the fifth energy level that transition will be forming a spectrum that series is called the fun series here the longest wavelength is 7453.6 nanometer and the shortest wavelength is 2277.5 nanometer this is also occurring in the infrared region so these are the ways in which the transition takes place depending upon the variation in the value of n1 and n2 suppose here see the possible ways in which the transition takes place the basic one the longest wavelength whenever there is a transition from n equal to 2 to n equal to 1 that lies in the Lyman series and this will be having the longest wavelength and the shortest wavelength when does that occur when there is a transition from infinity to the first energy level this simply gives a better explanation about what the different series are so the Lyman series whenever there is a transition from any higher energy level to the first energy level or the ground state of the hydrogen atom that transition gives the Lyman series similarly the other series also the difference is that here the transitions are in the excited states whereas here the transition comes and the electron will be coming to the ground state this is how the spectrum looks so from these observations it is very clear why the spectrum of the hydrogen atom is discrete and who has given the explanation it is from the theory that was postulated by Bohr that we could explain it very clearly that is the reason why his theory is more accepted and the other two theories which could not explain the spectrum were eliminated so that is the conclusion of the topic and with this one we are concluding the chapter of atoms